Lorraine Ugan finished the 2018 athletics season as world number one in the long jump. The 27-year-old from Great Britain has come a long way since taking up the sport at the relatively late age of 15. Following a strong junior career, Lorraine began to appear on the radar of some American colleges. I was getting recruited by a few schools and at first I really wasn't that interested. Um, I love London and I was like, I'm never leaving London, there's no reason why. Um, but one of the schools was very persistent and they were like, you know, we'll bring you on a visit, we'll pay for your food, your accommodation, everything, just come and have a look. I thought, let me take this quick holiday, enjoy myself out there and then come back to London. So I went on the trip and then I realised that, wow, this is like, it's just so much different. In 2011, Lorraine moved to Texas Christian University in Fort Worth to study film, TV and digital media. Working under the tutelage of coach Sean Jackson, she set her sights on making the British team for the 2012 London Olympics. Lorraine went to the British trials looking for the qualifying mark of 6 metres 75. I remember, because I remember it was the second round jump. And I remember getting out the pit and looking, looking at the crowd and then someone was like, that was it. And in my head I thought, ooh, I might have done it. And then I remember the mark came on the board and it was 6.74. And I remember like, I almost celebrated and I was like, ah! Because it was like, the mark, it was 6.75 and it was so close, but then I wasn't there. But then I thought, Do you know what, it's round two. I've got four, four more jumps. I'm going to be able to get in this competition. Unfortunately, Lorraine fell agonisingly short of an Olympic berth by just one centimetre, but she bounced back in 2013 by winning the prestigious NCAA title. After graduating from TCU in 2015, a breakthrough season followed, culminating in a fifth place finish at the World Championships. Then in March 2016, a first major medal, bronze at the World Indoors. Later that year, Lorraine finally made the British team for the Olympics, but she was hampered at the Games by a hamstring injury. Um, I was still happy to be able to make an Olympic final. I know that even just looking at, back on it now, that gives me the confidence to know that even though I wasn't necessarily at 100%, I was still able to make the final and contend. So if I can make sure that I keep myself healthy and keep myself injury free, coming into the next Olympics, I really do feel like I can be contending for something. A year after Rio, Lorraine won silver at the European Indoors. Earlier this year, she headed to Australia for the Commonwealth Games full of confidence. I really loved Commonwealth as a that was that might be one of the one of my highlight trips. And that was more so because not just for competing, but also for the outside life of um, the Commonwealth. So I feel like there was a lot of stuff that we could do in Australia and we could kind of experience. Because sometimes you go to championships and you say, oh, I've been to this country, I've been to that country, but you didn't really experience it. So I feel like on, that, on this championships, we also experienced the outside life of what Australia had to offer. Yeah. <laughs> At the Games, Lorraine made new friends, including Jennifer Madu, an American-born sprinter representing Nigeria. It's kind of sad because when people watch track and field, they don't ever get to see the athletes as the person they are. They only get to see them as a competitor. Um, but Lorraine's a goofy. She's, she has a good time wherever she goes. She brings that positive energy. Um, she doesn't care who's watching, and I think that just kind of makes everyone else comfortable to be around her, just because she's not worried about what everyone else is doing. So, she makes jokes, she dances, even though she can't, so it's fine. <laughs> At the Commonwealths, Lorraine finished fourth in a high-quality long jump final, but her games experience didn't end there. One of England's 100-metre sprinters picked up an injury before the relay final. With both the reserves racing in the 4x400 relay, it was down to Lorraine to anchor the team home. Given a comfortable lead by Asher Phillip, Dina Asher-Smith and Bianca Williams, there was the small matter of holding off the double Olympic sprint champion Elaine Thompson of Jamaica. When I got the button, I was just thinking, just run, just run, just run. And I, in my head, I had to think, just keep calm because I knew that they were probably going to start coming up behind me. 
and especially when I started to get closer to getting closer to the line, I started to hear the crowd getting really loud. And whenever the crowd gets loud, I'm like, okay, somebody's either coming for me or someone behind me. And I thought it's probably me, so I just need to keep calm and keep my form and keep running and just pray that the line comes as quickly as possible. It was a golden end to an eventful few weeks in Australia and set Lorraine up for a successful season. A maiden Diamond League victory in Stockholm was followed up by the jump of her life at the British Championships. In the second round, Lorraine broke the seven metre barrier for the first time with a championship record of 7.05 metres. It was shocking and it's funny because I, know, I knew that I could jump seven metres but it was still shocking to actually see it happen because it's just like, I've been working on this for so long and to actually see it on the board, I, didn't, I just didn't know how to react except for to scream and run. Um, but I don't know, it was just great, nice to see that I've finally gotten it out and hopefully I can continue to get more seven metre jumps. Following three years of knocking on the door of seven metres, it was a big change in technique that saw Lorraine finally surpass the mark. Um, yeah, my technique has changed a little bit. I've um, been sneaking in a cheeky hitch kick. Um, I, was, I, I was hanging before that, but I feel like I, I was having problems with dropping my feet a lot. And I used to, because I used to jump off my other leg, and I used to hitch kick on my other takeoff leg, but when I originally moved, I couldn't hitch kick backwards. And so the hang was kind of just automatic. And I think it kind of just, I don't even know when it happened, but it just kind of happened naturally that the hitch kick just, it just happened. And then it worked, so we're like, okay, let's keep this. Taking confidence from finishing 2018 as world number one and with a seven metre jump on her CV, Lorraine Ugan looks set to be contending for more golden glory in the near future. I don't even think she's reached her greatest achievements. Just the fact that she sets a goal and she works towards it. And even though she might go through like trials and tribulations to get there, she still keeps her eye on the prize and she still keeps working it. She has faith in herself and her coaches in her support system, um, sky's the limit. We don't know, She's, she can do whatever, so. I feel like there's a lot of people that are not able to necessarily do the career that they want. They do it for the money, but not so because they love it. And so for me, I love the sport and I love track and field because this is something that I would do, I was doing before it was ever about money or anything like that. It's just something that I really enjoyed. So that's why I love it.